Hello, the objective of this video is to learn how to perform operations on radicals. And that will also involve learning some of the properties of radicals. To do that, you need to know some of the vocabulary. Square root. Square root is one of two equal factors of a number. As an example, a square root of 9 is 3, since 3 times 3 is 9. 3 and 3 are the same number. Multiplying together, you get 9. The square root of 9 is that 3. So basically, you're asking yourself, what number times itself is going to give me this? And that will help you find the square root. Algebraic, this is written as if a squared equals b, then a is the square root of b. Perfect square. Perfect square is a rational number whose square root is a whole number. These perfect squares are very important. We're going to work more with those when we talk about estimating square roots. These perfect squares, for example, is 25. It is a perfect square since the square root of 25 is 5. The square root of 26 is going to be 5 point something. It's not going to be a whole number. Therefore, 26 is not a perfect square. The perfect squares are 1, 4, 9, 16, 25, 36, 49, 64, 81, and going like that. You may want to memorize them, or you may just want to remember that the perfect squares have whole numbers as their square roots, which means that if you take the whole numbers and square them, you find this list. 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 5 is 25, 6 is 36, 7 is 49, 8 is 64, 9 is 81, and 10 would give you 100, which would be the next perfect square, and so on like that. Working with these perfect squares will really help you when it comes to estimating answers. Radical sign. Radical sign is a symbol used to indicate a positive square root, and technically it should look like this. Lots of times mine start looking more like division, long division symbols, and I do apologize for that, but it should be more of a line here first and then angled down like that. That's what a radical sign looks like. No, every positive number has both a positive and a negative square root. Has both a positive and a negative square root. The square root symbol, this radical here, it represents just the positive square root. Now what does that mean? Well, let's take a look here. Here we have the square root of 225. Well, the square root of 225, you plug that into your calculator. To do that, you're going to do 225, hit the square root symbol, which is that symbol, and it's going to give you an answer of 15. It's as simple as that. The square root symbol will give you that in the calculator. Hit 121 in your calculator, then hit the square root symbol, you're going to get 11. These are the positive square roots. If you wanted the negative square root, you'd have to put the negative in front. This is indicating that we want the negative square root. So we take the square root of 9. You go 9, hit the square root, and you're going to get 3. But because there's a negative on the front here, it becomes a negative 3. Be careful. This is not the same as the square root of negative 9. This is not possible. There are no real number solutions to a negative underneath the radical symbol. You cannot have two numbers that multiply, to, two numbers that are the same that multiply by each other to get a negative. Because if one's negative and one's positive, that will give you a negative. But if both are negative and you multiply them, it's positive. So there's no way to get a negative underneath there unless you're working with uh, imaginary numbers, which you're going to get into a lot longer down the road, not with this here. All right, 16. The square root of 16, this is asking for the positive and negative values of it. So when it's alone, it's asking for the positive. A negative symbol in front, you're asking for the negative version of it. When you get the positive and negative in front here, you want both. You type in 16 into your calculator. You hit that square root symbol. It's going to give you an answer of 4. Your answer is both 4 and negative 4, both the positive and the negative values. 
You can write it like that, or you can write it with that plus minus symbol like that. This is why I say you never add a negative like that without putting the parentheses around it, because this plus minus means a different thing altogether. All right, properties of square roots. If you take the square root of a fraction, it's the same as taking the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. Why is that helpful? Well, here we have an example. The square root of 9 over 100. You don't want to have to do 9 divided by 100. You've got to get some weird work there. But 9 isn't one of those perfect squares. The square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 100 is 10. I was able to simplify that and get an answer without having to use a calculator because I've memorized some of those perfect squares. And those perfect squares are going to come up again and again and again. So it does help to have those memorized. What about multiplying? If you take the square root of A times the square root of B, it's the same as saying the square root of A times B underneath the radical there. Where is that helpful? Well, the square root of 3 is going to give you a long decimal point. The square root of 12 is going to give you a long decimal point. But if you were to take them and change them into the square root of 3 times 12, 3 times 12 is 36. So this becomes the square root of 36, which is one of those perfect squares. So the square root of 36 is going to give you 6. So there may be times working with these properties that you'll be able to simplify things down and work with your head rather than your calculator. Trying to keep these decimals straight, you may end up with rounding issues. Square root is the opposite of the square. In other words, it undoes the square. So if you take 4 squared, 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. You take the square root of 16, it brings you back to the number 4. It undoes the square. So we can use this, sort, use this property to solve equations that have squares in them. But take note, negative 4 squared is also 16. So when we go to solve this, we have to be careful. Going to solve, you have x squared equals 16. To solve it, you want to undo the square. So you're going to undo it by doing the square root. But whenever you do the square root to solve, you've got to have the positive and negative values of that square root. Why? Because, again, here we can see negative 4 works just as well as positive 4 when you go back to the original here. Plugging it back into the original, you're, if you had negative 4 or positive 4, you're going to get 16 for an answer. So when you do this, when you've got to take the positive and negative square roots of 16, which is both positive 4 and negative 4. Let's take a look at another example here. We have x squared equals 169. We need to do the square root of both sides to solve. That's going to give me x, because the square root of x squared is x. Square root of 169, again, I want the positive and negative versions of that. So I want both the positive and negative of square root of 169. Type it in your calculator, hit square root. You're going to get 13. So the answer is both positive and negative 13. If I go back to the original, negative 13 times negative 13, that would be negative 13 squared. That's equal to 169. Positive 13 times positive 13 is also equal to 169. So both of these are acceptable answers for that equation. And that's not uncommon. When you've got a square in an equation, it's more likely to have two solutions than you are to have just one. All right, you do. We've got a couple of you do's here, a total of seven, four on this board, three on the next. Hit pause. Welcome back. All right, looking at number one here, we take our calculator, our handy-handy calculator. We hit three, zero, and then hit that square root symbol, and we get this is equal to 5.477225, and it probably continues on from there. Did say round to the nearest tenth if necessary. This is the tenth. 
place value here is greater than 5, so my final answer is going to be 5.5. Here we have 625. We type 625 in our calculator, hit square root. We get 25 for our answer. No need to go any further than that. Here we take 49, hit 49 in our calculator, hit square root. I get 7. It's going to be negative, so I have a negative 7. Here, if I type in 36 and make it negative, and then hit the square root. My calculator gives me an error. It may say the number six, but it also has a little E for error on there. Because there is no real solution. You cannot do the square root of a negative. Try it in your calculator. Negative number, square root, you're going to get an E on there. It may give you a number two, but the E means there was an error. All right, pause the video and take these, try, try for these. All right, read through question seven first, just to give you a chance. You are looking into buying a square-based shed that has an area of 100 square feet. The space in your yard is 9 feet by 20 feet. Can the shed fit in your yard? Welcome back. To solve this one, we do the square root of x squared, and we do the square root plus or minus the square root of 36. We get x is equal to plus or minus 6 as our answer. Here, we do the square root of y squared, and the square root plus or minus of 81, and that gives us y is equal to plus or minus 9. Now the shed question. You may think, well, you do nine times 20, you get 180 square feet. 100 square feet should fit into 180 square feet just fine. Draw a picture here, though. That's a square. The yard is a rectangle. That's nine feet by 20 feet. In order for this square to fit in that yard, this dimension has to be nine feet or less. So what we have to do is we have to think about the fact that the side square of a square is going to give us the area, the 100 feet. Now we have to solve that to figure out whether it can fit in here. The square root of s squared gives you s. And we're not going to worry about the negative in this case because we're not worrying about a negative distance. There's no way of a negative distance on the area there. The square root of 100 gives you 10. So the length of one side of that shed is 10 feet. Can that fit inside of here? Well, it could fit this way just fine. But the other 10 feet, that's not going to fit in our 9 foot wide yard there. So no, the, the yard can, the shed cannot fit in the yard. It's too wide. See you in class.